Hey guys, welcome back to the uh, second part and this time around I'll be talking about the different documents that you actually require. There is a total of 12 different documents that you require. I'm gonna put this on this side here so you can actually see. First, you need the uh, completed application form which is form number one. Number two, which is the uh, NIAID pledge. Number three is your personal statement. Number four, your study plan. Number five, two recommendation letters. Um, from your high school teacher or your principal or your academic advisor. Number six, a personal medical assessment. Number seven, your graduation certificate of your high school. Number eight, your high school grade transcripts. Number nine, certificates of your citizenship and your parents as well. Number 10 is a certificate of Korean or English proficiency, if applicable. And then uh, number 11 is a certificate of health authorized by a medical doctor. And number 12, one copy of your passport. For number 11 and number 12, these are only required if you pass through the second round of selection. So there are a total of three different rounds. Firstly is submitting your documents, that will be the first round. If you pass the first round, you will go on to the second round, which is the interview that is being held at the embassy. And then the third round would be where your documents and uh, their feedback would be sent over to the NID in Korea. And they will make a third and final decision and thereafter you getting through it. If you pass the second round, which is the interview in the embassy and you pass through it, they will request for your health um, certificate and your passport. So um, one thing you need to know is that you need to have one set of original documents and three sets of photocopied documents. Um, for things such as your birth certificate, you can't really submit the original document. You could submit the uh, photocopy and then if you get selected for the interview, you would go down on the day itself and show the original document. And whereas things such as your transcripts and your certificates, these can actually be printed again for a certain amount of money at your respective high schools. Okay, so let's go into the different forms that are available. Form number one, which is the application for KGSP under the undergraduate or graduate degree. You need to fill in the regular things like your, your name, your family name, your given name, your middle name, your nationality, um, your birth date, where you'd actually wish to be studying, um, your language proficiency in English and in Korean, and uh, which universities you want to go to and which preferred majors that you wish to go into. So these are some things that you actually need to go and find out beforehand, before applying. There, there will be a checklist of your original and your copied documents and whether you have them. Basically your personal information, your passport photos, your native language, your home address, your high school address, your language proficiency, your education, your high school grades, your family background, previous scholarships that you might have received, or previous visits to Korea. It's basically just um, your own information and your family and your list of recommenders and things like that that you need to fill up. The second form would, is basically a pledge. It's for you to read through and actually um, pledge that you follow the rules if you were to get it and live in Korea. So you need to sign on the dotted line and submit that as well. Next is your personal statement. Now, personal statement is something that's really big here in Korea. It's something that you need to write well. Basically, you need to talk about the motivations in which you have when you're applying for this program and uh, things about your personal background for them to get to know you. Different experiences that you may have had in Singapore that has brought you to where you are today. Extracurricular activities, club activities that you may have had in your high schools, your secondary schools. Different awards that you may, may have received that makes you seem like a person worthy to receive a scholarship. What you really need to write in, in a personal statement is sort of to sort of sell yourself, to tell them why you are a great pick why they should be picking you as a representative for this scholarship. So you need to actually sell yourself to make yourself seem as studious as possible, as outstanding as possible. Thereafter is your study plan. Now, your study plan, I believe it's really important in a sense where they want to know how much you can achieve, right, during the five years that you're here as a university student. For them to pick you as a representative, think about what you might want to achieve in your universities what you might want to achieve in your majors and how you can go above and beyond what is expected of you as a regular student. Some things that you can actually be writing in your study plans could be traveling around Korea, exposing yourself to more of the culture, to understanding and learning more about the different cultures from the different regions within South Korea, getting to know more about the people, learning more about you know, how people live, live their lives, how people have different types of um, languages and things like that. You also need to be writing more about your academic achievements and how you plan to look for internships, how you plan to apply for 
different programs that could develop you into a better person. Maybe you could even be going into starting a, a new club or starting a new initiative in the university where you could be doing something for the environment. These are some things which you can actually think into and think about something that aligns with your own passion. And if this is something that you are passionate about, this would be something that you would have a lot of enthusiasm and this can actually be seen from your writing. Try and look for something that you might wish to attempt during your five years here. For me, I wrote about doing more research and growing more as a person and to find out different uh, social problems that I could solve through my own capacity, through what I've learned and different knowledges that I, I may have gained through living in Singapore but studying in Korea. And these are some of the things that I could use. I wrote a lot about what I would be doing aside from just studying hard in university um, show that I can be a good delegate of Singapore in South Korea. If you're just going to be writing things like studying hard in university, getting a good GPA, I mean this is something that everybody's going to write. So you need to find something that is unique to yourself, I guess in that sense. Something which only you might be able to provide and would make them really want to pick you as an applicant. And then next would be the letter of recommendation. Now, find people that know you personally, I feel. For me, I went back to my polytechnic and I got two of my closest lecturers to write the letter of recommendation for me. I sort of gave them like a little draft, a list of certain achievements that I've had, I have had during my polytechnic years, which is uh, certain programs that I, I have done, um, certain club activities that I've done and uh, how I think certain things they believe about you or they know about you that they have seen through um, classes with them and I think this is really important because if you were to just find anyone and just give them a, a letter of recommendation they, they could write it but they wouldn't be able to write it very well or very personalized to the type of person that you are and I believe that evaluators would be able to know whether a recommendation form is just basic or whether it's well written so this is something that is really important you need two of this from a recommender Next would be your personal medical assessment. So this is something that um, we probably have filled in many, many times. When was the last time you consulted a physician? Have you had any um, problems with your health? Have you been in, in the hospital in the past two years? Any allergies, any visual or hearing impairment? When you're, all, when you're done with all the forms, put it all in one big en envelope. Submit it to the embassy. For me, rather than giving it via mail, what I did was I went down to the place personally and I handed it over. If you do this, you would know that you actually submitted. If you give it through mail, something might happen, it might get lost and things like that. So you wouldn't want that to happen. Yep. So this is uh, all I have for the video about the documents that you need to actually prepare and submit. And I hope this breakdown of everything that I've mentioned was of help to you. And if you guys have any um, questions and things like that, leave it down in the comments below. Stay tuned to the next video where I'll be talking about the interview and uh, what you guys might need to do after getting the, the scholarship. I'll see you in the next one.